Welcome to Upwell, the podcast. I'm Sarah, and this is my beautiful co-host, Katie. As fellow female entrepreneurs turned friends and now business partners, we are so happy you're here. With every episode, it is our sole purpose to share authentic conversations to inspire your personal level up. Take our curiosity at your best intentions and flow with us in the Upwell. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Upload the Podcast. I'm Sarah. This is Katie, and we're so happy you're here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> She's really happy you're here. Oh, I have to tell you right now, you look beautiful, and I really love your shirt. Thanks. It's a new one. It's so cute. Yeah. I like you it. get it? TJ Maxx. Oh, got to love Ross Marshall's TJ Maxx. Mm-hmm. Those are the good places. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> have been trying to batch record, mm-hmm. which just means that we record more than one episode at a time, so that way, you know, we can get ahead of the game a little mm-hmm. bit when it comes to releasing weekly episodes. So I got a clothes rack for us. So we're like real deal in the studio now. We have like, it's like a green room <laughs> behind Ooh. the scenes. Mm-hmm. And so we've got a whole rack of clothes that we never get to wear. So it's kind of, it's been kind of fun. Yeah, I play dress up. <laughs> Yeah, we do our hair and our makeup. Yeah, I don't do my hair and my makeup most of the week, yeah. but I'm, when I'm here, do my hair, do my makeup, get to put on some clothes, I wear, tell people, wear my jewelry. Yes. Mm-hmm. I tell people I either look like a troll, like I crawled from underneath a bridge, or like a beauty queen. Like, I don't really have a middle of the road. Like, I'm either all ready to go, or people will see me and have to do a double take because they're like, whoa, what's wrong with her? <laughs> she yeah, okay? and more often than not, I'm a troll. <laughs> There's nothing wrong and with I that. And I am A-okay with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. We're naturally beautiful. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it is fun, though, to dress yeah. up. And I think, too, just because of, like, what we do for a living, we don't mm-hmm. get the opportunity to, like, yeah. dress up all the time. And it's so funny. You know, we talked about in our episode a couple weeks ago about changing careers. Like, we would have both dressed completely differently if we would have stuck with what – if we would have continued those same careers. You know, like, when I was a hairdresser, I dressed up – Every day. Like Every day. What I looked like was my, like, billboard, <laughs> you yeah. know? And I worked in an office where I had to be, like... Business professional. Respected. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, like, mm-hmm. pantsuits. Maybe not that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Matching pantsuits. Not for Katie. And no. I have <laughs> always been more of a, like, anthropology, free people yeah. type of fashion in terms of, like, even, like, dressy clothes... Like he that, was like flower child, kind of hippie. I'm a little, I, I, I not even kind of hippie. I'm pretty hippie. Yeah, yeah. I consider myself like West Coast hippie. I guess I like fringe. I like like lacy. Like I don't know. I kind of. But my closet. If you went in my closet, I look like I don't know what I want to be. <laughs> I don't know what I want to look like ever because I think I dress for like where I'm going and what I'm doing though because I like have New York runway chic like black leather pants you know and then I've got something I would wear to the California beach you know it's I don't know I don't know exactly what my style is but it's definitely evolved over the years for sure yeah I'm either in black or white or it has to be like a brightly colored pattern yeah, that is. I have noticed that with mm-hmm. you. It's either very super neutral black or white, mm-hmm. nothing on it, mm-hmm. or it's like, there's Katie. Here she I comes. See her. Here she comes. I see her mm-hmm. way over there. Yeah, those are my kind of my two my two styles. Of, I like that. Though. I'm a bit of an enigma. I don't fall into like a, I think a stereotypical enigma. That's the word. Yeah, I don't fall into a stereotypical um, style yeah. or persona. Whereas like. And I don't try to judge people, but you can. There are times when I see somebody, and it's just kind of like, "Oh, yep, I get." Bet you, I can predict what they do for a living. I think with, too. Going back to like as you age, mm-hmm. when you're younger, you're expected not expected, but like to fit in with wh- who your crowd is. You dress mm-hmm. a certain way, you know, mm-hmm. whether you were a preppy or an athlete or an emo kid. You know, all mm-hmm. those different like personas mm-hmm. really dictated the way that you kind of showed up physically like what you wore mm-hmm. how you did your hair how you did your, you know mm-hmm. if you did your makeup all that kind of stuff so I think it's just so interesting I think my style now is um tired mom or tired dog mom like I'm just I want to be comfortable <laughs> I don't want to look scary when I go to the grocery store but I also don't care what I look like so it's 
I'm somewhere in that world right now. Is that like a mid thirties thing? Probably. Mine is um, what is the acronym? I D A G F. Yeah, yeah. She don't give. Oh, that's funny. Whatever. I D G A F. I D G A F. That's my style. Yep. But no, if I am gonna, if I do gravitate to more towards like the um, kind of the hippie vibe. Yeah, I like that though, and I think the cool thing about fashion right now is that it is kind of more wide variety Mm -hmm. it's like more open I don't think people like pigeonhole into different categories based on their style or people can like more than one thing and I think it's more fun because I I really do I play with my wardrobe I guess as like a creative outlet like Mm -hmm. if I like something it, it expresses me maybe and I think that's kind of fun to play with you know the idea of your clothes being an extension of your personality oh absolutely yeah yeah. That has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about today. But I just had to tell Katie that I thought she was so pretty and that I like playing dress up with her. So yeah, I really like your hair pulled back like this. You don't wear you. you don't wear it pulled back like that very often. I don't. It's either usually a bun on top of my head, um, or just yeah. down. So it's kind of fun. I'm trying to do something new and different. Perfect. Um, so today, there's not really a transition for this, but we're gonna talk about numerology. And I know a lot of the episodes we've been talking about to you guys about very scientific things and very personal things and so we wanted to do something that was a little more woo -woo, a little more esoteric um you know ancient wisdom kind of stuff that we personally are into and even if you maybe aren't that person that's way into astrology and all these different modalities it's so fun because again it's not a fortune teller it's not a magic crystal ball but it is ancient wisdom you know there's these are things that have been around for thousands of years and so many civilizations have used them as tools over the course of time yeah and i think they're just so interesting to learn about yeah um and with numerology numerology is one of the easiest ones actually to kind of to do yeah because all you need is a piece of paper and a pen you don't have to remember anything definitely yeah I think it's a good introduction because like with astrology and other other things Mm -hmm. like that there is a lot of moving components where numerology is like do you know how to add you can do it you can learn so I think it's cool and one thing about this one again we always like to be fully transparent this is one that we aren't super like deep knowledgeable on so you're going to kind of we're going to be a little bit surface level but we're going to kind of just play around with it today and kind of see what we find out while we're recording so that we can share it with you while yeah. we're doing it so yeah. just going to have a little fun today that was exactly it i just wanted to have fun and we thought this topic would be something that we mm-hmm. could explore kind of together with you guys and learn a little bit more about each other in the process yeah. and hopefully inspire you to maybe have some fun with it in your own life. So I'm going to turn it over to Katie. She got these really cool books from Barnes & Noble a couple days ago. Um, but it's kind of like a basic introduction to numerology. And I'm going to have her share the history, I guess. A very brief history, obviously. Because you could probably Google numerology right now and get the full explanation of how yeah. it started and where it came from and how it ties to other like esoteric arts. Um, but this is kind of just an overview of, of where it started and what it is. So numerology is an ancient technique that uses numbers to assess the character and destiny of a person, but it can also be used to check out the nature of a new pet, a business, or anything else you can think of as long as it has a name or a starting date that you can work with. Um, It's really easy to use. Like I said, all you need is a piece of paper and a pen. Um, If you need a calculator as well, you can, you know, you can use that. But uh, numbers are everywhere and they always have been. Even animals have an idea of numbers, especially when on the lookout for predators. Um, because they need to judge how many there are and how far away they might be. Um, Ancients, the ancient Hebrews, Greeks, and Romans used number systems based on the letters of the alphabet. But the numerical system that we actually use today is um, from the Arabs. Yeah. Yeah, Did you know that? that. Okay. Um, I don't know how, but I... (laughs) Uh, Mathematics can be uh, traced back to the need to count the the bags of grains that a farmer brought to a grain store. Um, It can also be used for planning a town like the layout, the architecture, yeah. all of that. Um, so most of us have heard, or you, I might be bringing back some memories here, the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. Um, so the mathematician Pythagorean, uh, Pythagore- Pythagor- Pythagoras, thank you, buddy, buddy. Um, he is cred- he's credited as the originator of numerology, um, but it was already in existence long before he was but he's still kind of given credit for it um but it was the pythagorean brotherhood that worked out the basics of the system that we use today 
Um, and then it kind of really started in Italy. In it says here the sixth century BCE. Hmm. Yeah, that's so long ago, and I think there's so much to be said about like ancient wisdoms like mm -hmm. that that are still so prevalent in our lives today. Because look at just numbers in general. Take away the numerology factor from it, but everything is a measurement: time, mm -hmm. space, you know, direction. Like everything is is connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and anything is that's measurable mm -hmm. really can be counted or you know some sort of number mm -hmm. system is involved. So I think it's just so cool to kind of tie that into different aspects of your life. And even if you're not into all the things that we talk about today, I love recognizing patterns, right? Or seeing repeating things. And, you know, numbers is a big part of that. You know, if you're, I, I know people have heard this saying before, but it's 11, 11, make a wish, mm -hmm. you know, like repeating. Or it's one, two, three, four, make a wish. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like fun to see correlating patterns. And mm -hmm. I think people, people's minds subconsciously look for connection mm -hmm. and look for patterns like that, whether, you know, it, to, just to put things together in your brain, <laughs> whether you're thinking about it or not. Right. Yeah. The numbers are everywhere. Patterns are everywhere. Yeah. Um, it kind of ties in. The, you know the patterns and the numbers tie into sacred geometry as yeah. well which that can be a whole different topic that we can do sometime but in terms of numerology we wanted to really just kind of touch on how you can find out what some of your personal numbers are and what those personal numbers mean yeah yeah and this is going to be super fun because katie and i just learned each other's but we're going to dive into a little bit more about them mm -hmm. um but first i want to share with everyone there are vast amounts of different numerology numbers that could pertain to your life. Um, but the ones we're going to talk about today are the universal number. So that is the number that we are collectively in based on the year. So based on the year that we're in right now, kind of the energies and the themes that could potentially, you know, show up in everyone's lives. And then there's more personal numbers that are personal to your birth date, your name, you know, they fluctuate just depending on what you're kind of looking for. You can you can search things like your what your soul's destiny is or your life's purpose or you know your karmic debt so there's a wide variety if you are interested in learning more but like i said we're going to talk about our personal number our personal year and the universal year yeah those are the kind of the three so why don't you explain then how let's start with universal year yeah okay let's start with that one so to explain to everybody how we found how we calculate that yeah so this one's pretty simple yeah it's really just the the current year you just find the current year and you add all of the digits of the year and that will give you the cycle or the number that we're in everything is run on a one through nine scale so anytime you add the digits of a number and it goes above 10 you add those two numbers together to create a single digit there are um i forget what they're called they're double digit numbers they're they have a name. The life numbers? No. But it's like 11, 22, 33. They have names because those are their own category of numbers. But for the most part, you add to always end up with one single digit. Um, and so we are in the year 2023, obviously. So if you add 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 3, you're going to round out to the number 7, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me practice my addition today live on camera. Um, so we are in a universal year seven. So these are some of the themes that could potentially be coming up for all of us collectively in this year. Um, number seven is actually the most highly spiritual number. It's known for being the year of the philosopher and the seeker. So if you're looking to gain new knowledge or uncover hidden knowledge or truths, this is the year that some of that, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I think it's funny, too. I think it's pretty accurate. Um, but yeah, it's a time of gathering knowledge. Inward focus also is a big theme. So a lot of self-reflection and personal growth and um, individual transformation can be a theme of the Universal Year 7, too. That's cool. I know. So the fun thing is, is I am in a personal Year 7, too. So it's like double whammy for me, baby. Oh, it's a double, a double yeah. duo. Okay. Yeah. So to find your personal year, all you do is take your birth day, month, and the current year. So again, um, you would take whatever the day is, the number mm -hmm. of the day, the month number, 
and then add up the year that you're in and add all of those digits and they will give you one singular number and that's your personal year number. So like I said, I'm in a year seven. Um, Katie, I think you figured out what you're in. I believe I'm in eight. Ooh, I like that. Yes. Tell me, I already told you about seven. So those are kind of my personal themes. Katie's going to share what uh, personal year eight kind of looks like for her. Give me one second. I just got to look it up here in my little book. Like I said, we are uh, 117. Awesome. Okay. We're learning as we go. We're, We're know, learning we as we go. We know a little bit about it, but it's just kind of fun. We found this cool book to, to give us some more information. Oh, those oh, that's are person. A that's though. a number. Yeah. That's a number. I know what I've heard about. Oh, here. Oh, perfect. Personal here. I am an eight. So here for me, um, Saturn, Capricorn, or to some extent Aquarius. So that ties a little bit more into astrology. Um, but key ideas, business and money making but also strength, sex, karma, and service to others, which Ooh. I think that is kind of right on the money with what I am doing, you know, with service, with service, service to others and money making for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. I, think I know um, the year eight and the number eight itself has a lot to do with abundance. So it can be yeah, the little to, money sign is to making mm -hmm. money. And if you think of, I always tell people, if you think of the number eight and looking at like an infinity symbol, mm -hmm. it's very like fluid. cyclical and fluid. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that can be like a theme of your personal year eight too, is just finding your rhythm, finding the fluidity in your life to create abundance. Yeah. It says, if you have led a good life thus far, you can expect to be in for a measure of karmic reward because you will gain in prestige, respect, financial benefit, and more. But the events outlined below will take longer to come into being for those born in the second half of the year. So I was born in the first half yep. of the year. So that's kind of cool Yeah, that being born in the first half of the year and kind of it being a it being um, different. It being, yeah, it being different than the second half of the year. Definitely. It's interesting. Yeah. So I definitely encourage you to look at what your personal year is because, mm -hmm. like I said, we're in a universal year seven, which has a lot to do with self-reflection and personal growth. Right. But learning your own personal number, you can kind of tie them together. So, like, knowing that you're in a universal, universal year that's going to be important to learn new things, mm -hmm. educate yourself. And then you're also in a financially abundant year. Like, how can you start to connect those? So how again, it really all? comes back to learning these things and using them as a tool and just getting really curious, right? It's mm -hmm. like all about a human, being human to me is staying curious and having a good time, like having fun, <laughs> really. Always evolving, like always being yeah. open to the evolution of something new. 100%, mm -hmm. cool. So that's kind of the universal and the personal year numbers but then i wanted to share one more important number like I and said, i think this is the most the one that actually kind of in a sense describes you the most yes. because it's the most personal yes and so this one actually has to do with like your personality um and kind of how you show up in the world uh what you have to offer mm -hmm. in this lifetime i think is another mm -hmm. kind of key important part of your personal life path mm -hmm. number so your life path number is is uh, calculated by just your birth date. So it's just the day, the month, and the year, all the digits added together. Um, so I know I've done my research enough because <laughs> I've gotten into it a while ago and just kind of stopped going down the, the hole, but I am a personal life path eight. Okay. So that's the only reason I knew a little, a little bit more about Katie's personal year is because I've researched what my my life path number is mm -hmm. so again eight is about finding fluidity in your life and finding your path mm -hmm. you know with that cyclical manner um and it can have a lot to do with financial gain and loss mm -hmm. um what else did you find something else about? so life path number um leadership salesmanship and attraction to business and that is so my girl. I like to start new businesses. <laughs> yes. You can succeed at anything you put your mind to, but your failures can be pretty spectacular. That they are. Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> you work hard and aim to be fair and honest, but ambition may bring hardness and insensitivity. You may become a powerful tycoon, a success story, or you can attract envy. 
Ooh, envy. There's always the yin and the yang. Yes. To it, you know. There's always the the kind of the the light and the dark. Yep. To every you know to every single number. Yep. I encourage you if you find these numbers too to also look like you can Google all this information, mm-hmm. you guys. You can get a book if you want, but you can Google all of this. Yeah. If you look up your personal year number or your life path number, you can also search the shadow side mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. number. So it's exactly what you just said, but it'll. Why give don't you, you explain what the shadow side is? Yeah, it'll give you the not so great. Uh, side of that number, the theme around that number that maybe isn't the positive, Mm -hmm. happy-go-lucky side, Mm -hmm. the things that you could run into. And a lot of times it's just using the same energies, but in a negative way. So for instance, like my life path number is an eight and is very closely tied to money and abundance. But if I'm in my shadow or in the shadow of that number and I get greedy or I'm making money for the wrong reasons, I could potentially lose it all or hurt someone, you know? So there is always that, that yin and that yang, that pull. So as long as you're showing up in a positive way and you have good intentions, I feel like you can be in the light of Mm -hmm. your personal path, you know, your life path number. I, my life path number is a four. And I've known this actually for quite some time. Uh, mine is I am practical and sensible, which is, it might be kind of funny to some people that know me well. They might be like, what? But really deep down, those probably are two of my most ingrained qualities that I have as a human. I always come to you if I need a, like a down to earth, rooted in reality answer. Yes, I am you. going, I'm, I, I don't sugarcoat anything um you're gonna get a real she's right <laughs> you're gonna get a very real blunt honest no you know That's no a good f- no fluffy though. no fluffy from me um so it says you work hard in a steady and methodical manner and may place high value on traditional methods but you also may buck tradition and start a revolution Mm, I'm all about I'm all about revolutions. Um, while being reliable, you can also be nitpicky and too materialistic. Mm. So, and I can see that about myself. I can see at times where I can become I, I hone in on like the little little details, and yeah. I it's kind of like I even have to like step away and be like, why are you focusing on this right now? It's so minuscule, and it and like does it affect the greater aspect again though I think it's so empowering to know these things because Mm -hmm. like you said if you are looking at it from the light side Mm -hmm. you can be you know you're paying attention to detail yeah versus the shadow side where you're nitpicky or being too crucial Mm -hmm. or critical of something or someone so Mm -hmm. I think it's so cool to know kind of the themes or the personality traits around it and then really see how you can express them in your life that are in a beneficial way for you and and the world absolutely I agree with you on that so we have life path number, yes. our universal number, our personal number. And mind you, there are, you can actually even get other numbers based off of your name. Yeah. As well. There's um, so many. There's numerology, so many numerology numbers, that, numbers. that you can get um, that kind of represent different aspects of your life. You can do numbers based on your relationships. Mm-hmm. You can calculate the numerology of your home, like Katie said in mm-hmm. the beginning of your children's birthdays, of Pets' your... birthdays, the start of businesses. Yeah, mm-hmm. we actually did Upwell's um, start date. Uh-huh. And what did we determine it was? Seven? It's 2-3-2023. So that would be, let's let's add it out. So that'd be five, six, seven, plus it's a three. It is, because it comes out to 12, then you add one and mm-hmm. two together. So we are a three as a business. So we'll do some diving into that just to see what that means for us. But again, I just think it's so kind of just a fun little thing just to kind of maybe play around with. And yeah. just if you want to just if you're curious of, you know, doing something that's maybe a little more whimsical and like she said, esoteric to where, you know, kind of play around with it and see what it might say. You know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, what's my horoscope today? Some people take it for, you know, as it, with a grain of salt and other people take it like, no holds bar like this is this is how my day is gonna be um so that's you know totally your personal preference but we we kind of like diving into some of these little more woo-woo topics um they're kind of fun just to i think in a way they've been so rooted in tradition for so long and me being you know uh what what's my number a four i like you know tradition, tradition but i like to create revolution so maybe i'll create the revolution of bringing back tradition yeah i love that <laughs> i just got goosebumps i love that and again like all of these 
things, all mm -hmm. of these tools that are available to us for thousands of years, just help you to recognize your own potential, right? Like how can you improve your life, mm -hmm. improve your experience here, you know? And I just think it's such a fun thing to incorporate, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to get to know yourself a little bit more and how you can show up in the world and for other mm -hmm. people in your life. Yeah, and it, like I said, um, so many different so many different cultures have relied on these for yeah. so long to kind of guide them to where they are now. Yeah. Whether that's good or bad, like like we've said, there's always both light sides, and yeah. light and dark, both sides of it. But um, you know, just I think it, it's it's a practice in opening up your mind to to a different perspective on, on looking at things. Agreed, and I think we could all use more of that. Yes, absolutely. More of that. These All right. Any more nuggets on numerology that you know about? I don't think so. I want to share um, some of my personal favorite books. And, oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, and references that you could potentially learn a little bit more from. Mm -hmm. um, but I will link them in the show notes because I don't have them here. So they'll be linked mm -hmm. in the show notes. Please check them out. There are a couple of my favorite authors and you can find them on social media too. So mm -hmm. they'll be able to give you a little bit more information about your personal life path numbers and some of the other numbers that we didn't get an opportunity to really talk about today. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in learning more about certain aspects of your life, whether that's your relationships or your career, all the different fun things you can kind of dive a little bit deeper in and get some clarity or direction or just have some fun. Just have some fun. That's yep. what life is all about is having fun. 100%. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Upwell the Podcast. You can find us on all the places online at Upwell the Podcast. We are now on Pinterest and Twitter. So be on the lookout for stuff there in addition to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. You can find myself personally at barefoot.katie. And again, I am on all of the places online as well at Sarah Barons for Miss Sarah. So until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and take care of the world around you. Bye. Bye, guys.